All right, guys, we're back, and today we're taking a look at another really interesting part of history, one that I absolutely love. Uh, I'm fascinated by this, and we have a living memory of this one, so uh, it really kind of adds a little bit more intrigue. It has informed so much of the way that we live our lives, and it really has to do with the Cold War. Uh, in the midst of the Cold War, we're going to be taking a look at the Truman Doctrine and this policy of containment. So uh, to start off, what we are going to see is that the USSR, after World War II, is really going to be aggressively pushing the idea of communistic spread. Uh, they're really trying to exert a lot of control over some of these weaker countries. And I'm going to zoom in here on this political cartoon uh, because it, it very accurately shows the picture of the Russian bear. That's their symbol, uh, much like the bald eagle is ours. And so the Russian bear, Russian bear is kind of leaning over the globe uh, with Uncle Sam looking at it from below. And we see the influence of the USSR kind of spreading to Cuba and Western Europe. We're going to see it spreading to Africa and Syria, uh, the Middle East, Afghanistan, China, Thailand, Vietnam. It's, it's beginning to spread all over the world. And by the way, that's not an exaggeration. It really was spreading to those places. And so that political cartoon simply points out uh, what is actually going on in the world in terms of the spread of communism. Now, uh, this map also shows that, that a number of Eastern Europeans have already kind of fallen. They've adopted those communistic practices, communistic governments, and so I'm going to zoom in here as well. Uh, in fact, not some, all of the Eastern European countries, really. Uh, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria. We're seeing country after country. Basically, all of the countries that uh, Russia had invaded or liberated right, from the Germans in World War II, they simply refused to vacate. They, they simply supplanted uh, the Nazi regime as the new power in those areas, exerting their political and military influence. And that's a troubling concern for the United States. We didn't uh, want to trade one bad guy for another bad guy, one kind of uh, evil dictator with world domination uh, aspects for another. Uh, the expectation, as, as uh, we see it, is that uh, we liberate France and then we give France back to the French and we liberate Belgium and we give uh, Belgium back to the Belgians. Uh, we help to rebuild, certainly, uh, it, but we leave them their governments. We, we kind of go more or less uh, hands off. There's certainly going to be a relationship there. There's certainly going to be some aid given, uh, but we're not treating them the way that the Russians uh, are treating the countries that they liberated. Um, so that's kind of where we see things stand. Now, ultimately we have to understand that the goal of the USSR, the goal of communism, is to really wipe out democracy, to establish a worldwide communistic system. Uh, that is the entire goal. In fact, they would believe that communism can never truly succeed as long as there's a democratic influence in the world. Uh, that ought to tell you something. But, uh, but what it means for the United States is that they're going to be actively pursuing uh, the downfall of both our allies, uh, our friends, other democratically uh, elected and capitalist nations, people who we trade with uh, and in a very interconnected way, and ultimately the downfall of the United States. And so this is a, a bit of a problem for us. We really view communism uh, as if it's a contagion, it's a disease. This is a virus that has to be contained uh, because once it infects something, it destroys it. Uh, that's kind of the way in which we, we see it. Now, this guy, George Kennan, uh, is, is going to develop this idea, uh, 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 the idea of containment, because that's how you, you deal with diseases, is you put it in isolation. You make sure that it cannot spread. And so his ideas really make it into American policy. And in fact, I don't do a whole lot of this, but I'm going to do it a couple of times in this one. I'm going to read an excerpt from one of his uh, speeches. It is clear that the United States cannot expect in the foreseeable future to enjoy political intimacy with the Soviet regime. It must continue to regard the Soviet Union as a rival, not a partner, in the political arena. It must continue to expect that Soviet policies will reflect no abstract love of peace and stability, no real faith in the possibility of a permanent, happy coexistence of the socialist and capitalist worlds, but rather a cautious, persistent pressure towards the disruption and weakening of all rival influence and rival power. And he goes on to point out that we have to have long-term, patient but firm, and vigilant containment 
of Russia's expansive tendencies. And that, I think, does a phenomenal job of really kind of summing it up. Well, that policy is going to reach the White House, and, and Harry S. Truman is going to establish a major foreign policy around the, the idea of containment, around that principle. And so here's Harry S. Truman, and uh, we're going to see a little bit of his speech as well, uh, because what he says is, and this is really, I think, a very interesting thing, the seeds of totalitarian regimes are nurtured by misery and want. They spread and grow in the evil soil of poverty and strife. They reach their full growth when the hope of a people for a better life has died. We must keep that hope alive. The free people of the world look to us for support in maintaining their freedoms. If we falter in our leadership, we may endanger the peace of the world, and we shall surely endanger the welfare of our own nation. Great responsibilities have been placed upon us by the swift movement of events. <clears throat> and this I, I just really love because uh, it's, it's very much a true statement. The idea that communism really takes root when there is strife, when there's turmoil, when there is a lack of hope for a better future. Uh, when people can't see any opportunity for improvement in their life, when they can't see any uh, potential for progress or prosperity, when they have no hope, that's when they turn to the desperate ideas of communism. And so in order for us to really help contain communism, we need to make sure that hope doesn't die. We need to make sure that prosperity is achievable and that people are moving towards it. They can see the progress. And so with that in mind, uh, the, there is this thing called the Truman Doctrine. That's what, what Harry S. Truman establishes. The idea is that we're going to give aid, we're going to help rebuild a lot of uh, Europe, a lot of the world. We're going to give aid wherever the, the Russians, wherever the USSR begins to spread the seeds of that hideous disease of communism, then we are going to be there with the medicine. And hope is that medicine. So the really first test for this Truman Doctrine comes in Turkey and Greece. Uh, these are two countries that are facing communist revolts. And these are communist revolts that are being backed by uh, the USSR. Money and weapons are being thrown into it uh, by the USSR. Because if they fall, then, uh, then that's two more communist countries. That's more pressure against the democracies and the capitalists of the world. And so they really want to see that, uh, that influence spread. So uh, Congress is going to eventually approve uh, about $400 million to aid Greece and Turkey. Uh, now, this is going to be aid that's going to be spent for humanitarian purposes. Uh, it's also going to be sent in, in weapons uh, and training. We don't send soldiers directly because we can't risk all-out warfare. We can't risk uh, such aggressive behavior against the Russians in this Cold War. But we will send people who are willing to train. We will send weapons. We will uh, send people who can teach strategies and tactics. We're going to send food and uh, help to rebuild their economies so that uh, the people have uh, hope for a prosperous future. Ultimately, it's a success. Both Greece, and I'm going to go back to our, our map here uh, once I find it. Greece and Turkey uh, are two nations that had communist revolts, but both communist revolts were put down. And so here we're going to see that they are the only two uh, countries that are kind of behind the Iron Curtain, so to speak. Uh, this kind of line that separates the East from the West, East Europe from West Europe. Eastern Europe has fallen to communism. Uh, Western Europe is still free and democratic, with the exception of Turkey and Greece. Turkey and Greece have stayed democratic. They've stayed capitalist, in large part thanks to the, uh, the aid given under the Truman Doctrine. So uh, ultimately, we see it really kind of being a success. We face down those communist threats, uh, now, the Truman Doctrine is going to find a lot of success. It's also going to, to find that it can't solve all of the world's problems and can't re repel all of the communist revolts. Uh, there's going to be some successes. There's going to be failures. But what this does is it establishes the United States uh, as kind of the protector of democracies throughout the world, uh, especially when they are threatened by communists uh, and, and the spread of communism. So anyway, that hopefully helps you understand a little bit more about the communist uh, spread the policy of containment and the Truman Doctrine. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you, uh, you gained a little bit of knowledge and information about this. I hope it helped. 
Uh, and in the meantime, until the next videos come out, uh, make sure that you're liking the video, subscribe if you will, so I can push more content. Uh, and again, guys, thanks for watching.